We're going to go through the solutions to the problems on quiz four. There were actually two versions of the quiz, and each one had two problems on it. So I'm going to do uh, the recursive sequence problem from one quiz and the summation problem from the other quiz. <clears throat> so the first problem we had is uh, that we're given a recursive sequence, and we want to show that we have a, a particular closed formula that holds. Um, <clears throat> so in our, uh, in our table, the, the, the important thing here is that this large area is for us to write down what's going on using the recursive formula. And of course here we're writing down what happens with the closed formula. In this case the closed formula is 2n squared plus n. And then as we write both of these down we're checking to see if, um, if they're equal. So according to the recursive formula when uh, n is 1 I should get a1 equal 3 because that's what the formula says. So there's no, nothing that has to be done other than reading that off. The closed formula is 2 times 1 squared plus 1, and it's easy to check that those are, in fact, equal. When it is 2, I now need to calculate the recurrence formula in two steps. And this is the part that if you, <clears throat> if you start taking shortcuts here, um, that it becomes, first of all, a more difficult argument to read and second of all, it makes it harder to remember what to do when we get down to the algebra part. So I'd really recommend writing down the actual two steps that you do mentally when you calculate the next term in the recurrence relation. Uh, the recurrence says a2 equals a1 plus 4 times 2 minus 1. And that is literally reading this off using n equal the row number. So n equals 2, this says a2 equals a1 plus 4 times, oh, that's right, this was supposed to be a, supposed to be an n <coughs> instead of a k there. Um, so that's what the recurrence relation says. We can look at the row above it, above to see that a1 is equal to 3. So I substitute 3 for a n, and I can go ahead and do this arithmetic, 4 times 2 minus 1 is 7. So I'm adding 3 and 7 here. In the closed formula, I'm calculating 2 times 2 squared plus 2, so that's 8 plus 2. And so it's easy to see that 3 plus 7 and, and 8 plus 2 are the same thing. So I guess I'll write down what one of them is. <clears throat> and so those steps happen for every single one of these. A3 will be A2 plus 4 times 3 minus 1. That's the first step using the recurrence relation. Second step is look above to see what a2 actually is. a2 is 10 according to the previous row. And of course 4 times 3 minus 1 is 11. So when I add 10 and 11 I get 21. And then <clears throat> the closed formula predicts that this should be 2 times 3 squared plus 3. So that's 18 plus 3 also equal to 21. So I could do that for all four steps, but notice that I really am writing, I really am starting off with A3 here, so it's clear what I'm actually calculating. If you don't put that, then it's not really clear that what you're doing in this row at all. But we can see that we've calculated A3 being 21 two different ways. Um, and I can see that I'm doing that in two steps. The first is writing down the recurrence relation, and the second is using the previous row. So in the induction proof then, there's going to be some first row that the reader has not checked yet. So I'm going to let m be the number of the first row not yet checked. And so if you if you only proved, uh, did the first if the reader only did the first three rows the way I did here, then the reader's m is four. If the uh, reader did all four rows that I had indicated in the table, then the reader's m would be 5. And if the reader kept going and did nine rows, then the m would be 10. So the point is that when you say you're doing a proof by induction, the reader is agreeing to check things in order. And so when you say there's some first row you haven't checked yet, then that makes sense to the reader no matter how many rows he's already checked. Not yet checked. And so because m is the first row not yet checked, that means I know that row m minus 1, that's the row before 
the one that's not yet checked, has been checked. And so a n minus 1, um, this, the next row, will, just like these rows, it'll be start off with the which uh, element of the sequence, a sub n minus 1, a sub of the row number, and then you'll have equal to a bunch of stuff. And eventually you'll get some, some value. But that's what the row above looks like. The closed formula in the row above looks like 2 m minus 1 squared plus m minus 1. In other words, it's just the closed formula that I talked about before with the row number plugged into it. And the reason I don't really need to write out all the details of this calculation is, first of all, I don't really know what it's going to be. I know the format it's going to be. But because this previous row has already been checked, I know there's a, there's a check mark here for equals, because remember, row M is the first row I haven't checked, so this row has been completely checked off. I don't really need to know what this long calculation is. I know that the a sub m minus 1 is a long calculation that ends up being the same thing as this closed formula. And so later, when I need to know a sub m minus 1, I won't use this long calculation to get it. I'll just use the, the nice formula over here. And so that's what happens next. When I address row m, <clears throat> now if, if I do it the same way I did the numerical steps, again, assuming that you actually wrote out the steps, it will look like this, a sub m is equal a sub m minus 1 plus 4m minus 3. So once again, that's coming from the recurrence relation. <clears throat> Same place as came before, the recurrence relation, using the row number in place of n. So every place there's an n in here, if I replace that with the row number, m minus 1, I'm sorry, m, then this is what it'll look like. So that's the first thing. That's coming from the recurrence relation. This is equal to, well, look at what you did before with numbers. The second equal sign here, you just look to the row above and grab the number and brought it down. So that's what I'm doing here, except instead of a number, I'm going to be grabbing the algebra from the row above. So I'll be getting this stuff in place of in place of a n minus 1. So I'll have 2 times m minus 1 squared plus m minus 1. All of that is equal to the a n minus 1 according to the previous row. And then I still have this extra 4 m minus 3 that comes down as part of that calculation. So I've used my recurrence relation and then I've used that information from the previous row. After this point, it's going to be algebra, so I'm not going to write the algebra in this little box, but do the algebra, and don't just write the word algebra, really write out the algebra. Um, and you'll end up with 2m squared plus m. But do show the algebra steps, because that does show how the connection is made. Um, of course, the closed formula, when you use m for n, is 2m squared plus 1 plus m. Again, that's the using the formula up here and putting n equal the row number, which is m. And of course those are equal, and so we end with a, with a nice heartwarming statement that says that we've shown these two expressions are equal uh, in row m, which was the first one the reader had not yet checked, so that means that row m, the next one for the reader, is, is also true. And then that means that forever after that, Whatever row, whatever next row the reader hasn't checked yet will also be checked. So therefore, all the rows in the table get checked, which means that the recursive formula and the closed formula match forever. And that's what we are trying to prove.